All right, let's just take a minute to talk about internal storage drive interfaces because there seems to be a lot of confusion about it right now. And there always has been, quite frankly. When I first started, we were using an interface called RLL or MFM or SCSI, which we called SCSI. Yeah, SCSI with a straight face. Uh, it still exists today. <laughs> SAS is what it's called, Serial Attached SCSI. But that's primarily in the uh, enterprise. Most home users wouldn't deal with that. But we've always had these uh, words that describe the interface that connects your storage drive to the motherboard or to the controller, the hard drive controller. And then they came out with IDE, the Integrated Drive Electronics. And the IDE cable, you might have seen these in the past. They look like this. Uh, this is a 40-pin connector, and this one has 80 wires. You know, they originally had 40 wires, and then what they did later on is they added 40 more as a ground in between each cable to prevent any data crosstalk or bleed over. And the way this would work is you would plug one end into the motherboard, this blue end here, and then you had these other two connectors to plug into up to two hard drives, right? So you could have a master and a slave, and the hard drive would have a little plastic jumper, we called it a jumper, and you just move it to the master or slave position. And if you didn't set that up right, your drive didn't work, and your system always booted to the master drive. That's the way it worked. And uh, this is a cabling nightmare. It wasn't really a whole lot you could do other than some clever origami people were doing. with very time consuming. If you think cabling is difficult today, <laughs> you should have been doing it 15, 20 years ago. You'll have a new appreciation for just how easy cable management is compared to how it was. You know, people would round these cables, or you could buy them already rounded, and they still look terrible and were very difficult to cable manage, and there was this debate about whether or not this thing blocked your airflow. Now, this technology was called PATA, or Parallel ATA, and the technology we use today, of course, is SATA, SATA, or Serial ATA. Now, Parallel is a much more efficient way of transferring data, always more efficient than Serial. However, for whatever reason, the, tech, the engineers who developed this serial ATA figured out how to make it go faster and invested their time and money into making it go faster than the current parallel technology that we had. And so they came out with SATA version 1 or SATA 150. That means it would transfer data up to 150 megabytes per second. They doubled that with SATA 2 where it would transfer data up to 300 megabytes per second and then once again doubled it to 600 megabytes per second with our current generation SATA 3. And then they said, oh, we can't go any faster than this. This is as fast as the technology will allow us. This is, we can't exceed this without changing the technology. So they introduced the M.2 drive, which was a small step making it compatible with SATA. So a standard M.2 drive transfers data no faster, no better, no more efficiently because it still is limited by the drive interface, which is SATA. So then it came out with the NVMe, the Non-Volatile Memory Express, which requires PCIe times four. So what does a times four mean? Times four means <laughs> they return back the parallel, but it's a, it's a parallel serial connection. So if, if you had one serial connection at 600 megabytes per second, what happens if you have four of them? Then you have 2,400 megabytes per second, right? So it's a serial parallel connection. And they've called it PCIe times 4 NVMe, NVMe. Are you confused yet? Intel's got a new technology called Optane, which, makes, which takes that now to the next level. However, we're not going to talk about Optane here because there's really nothing to talk about until I have it in my hands and I can experience it personally. So I'm just making this video so you can tell the difference between a normal M.2 drive and an NVMe M.2 drive just by looking at them and why you should care. Oh, and why am I wearing this shirt? This shirt is in response to the tons of emails I get asking me if I'm a gamer. <laughs> am I a gamer? I'm the OG. I'm the original gamer. All right, let's start with what the drives look like. Here is a stick of gum, an M.2 drive, and an NVMe M.2 drive. Now, to the untrained eye, these all may look alike, although the M.2 and NVMe drive are quite a bit crunchier than the gum and less tasty. Don't advise eating that. But if you look closely at the ends, the ends are different. So as demonstrated in this drawing, 
The M.2 drive has two slots in it, and you'll see one slot is six pins from the left, and the other slot is five pins from the right. And then if we look at the NVMe drive on the right side of the photograph, you'll see it has one pin that is also five pins from the right. Now here's a photograph that, uh, of, of the actual M.2, and that M.2 drive can perform at the maximum SATA speed, which is in reality about 550 megabytes per second. And you'll see the slots on the photograph match up with the slots in the diagram above it. Looking at the NVMe drive, again, here's a close-up shot, and you're looking at as much as 2100, I'm sorry, as little as 2100, and as much as, oh, I don't even know what the, what the limit is. Uh, as the technology keeps improving, you know, Intel's got this uh, Optane technology. They're just talking about doubling or tripling that speed. So the NVMe I actually photographed here will do 2600 megabytes per second. But I, I just put 2100 plus because it just depends on the model of NVMe drive that you purchase. Now here's the socket for an M.2 drive. And you'll see there's only one notch on the socket on the left that's going to line up with the notch in the diagram below on the left that's six pins wide. And the notch on the right isn't used. But that notch on the left is very important because it's going to prevent you from plugging an NVMe drive in there because an NVMe drive won't work. And the NVMe drive, as you can see on the picture on the right, only has the slot on the right side. So does that mean you can plug an M.2 drive into an NVMe socket? Yes, you can. Will it work? Well, that depends on the motherboard. Some motherboards only support M.2, and of course they're only going to have the, the notch on the left. Other motherboards support NVMe and M.2, and some NVMe only, and some do both, like this Asus Z270 Mark II, which has a uh, NVMe slot only here on the top, and an NVMe or M.2 here on the bottom. Here's the M.2 drive plugged in to that lower slot on that motherboard, the uh, Z270, and here's the NVMe drive plugged into the same socket. They will both work. However, you may need to tell the motherboard which one you've got plugged in. So on this ASUS motherboard, we would fire it up and we'd go into the BIOS and choose advanced mode here. And then up here on the top, we're going to go to advanced and scroll down to onboard devices configuration. And if we scroll down a little further, you'll see the M.2-1, right, because one's dash one, one's dash two, configuration mode, and it's set to auto. But sometimes auto mode doesn't auto detect the drive properly. So you doesn't hurt to come in here and set it manually to either SATA mode or PCIe mode. You wouldn't want to put uh, an NVMe drive in there and not check your BIOS to ensure that for whatever reason it wasn't set to SATA mode because it will work in SATA mode at one quarter of its speed. And if you've never built a computer before, you don't know the difference. You'll never know. You'll just think it's blazingly fast at 550. So imagine how you're going to feel <laughs> when you actually configure it properly and you're getting 2600 out of it. All right, so I hope this clears up any confusion you had about M.2 versus NVMe. I, I hope I didn't make you more confused. But basically, you want that NVMe if you want high performance, and that's pretty much what it amounts to. Your CPU and the rest of your computer is able to perform much, much better by simply giving it faster storage. And most people's computers, the thing that's slowing their computer up the most is their storage device. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.